Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Ganji. I'm here with none other than Sean Cole. And we're here today to review the wireless force feedback racing wheel with vibration technology for the 360 by Mad Cats. Man, I'm out of breath. <laughs> you, you ought to be. Maybe That's I a should long just, title. It is. I'm going to take over from there. You're, All right, you thanks. You up. Like you mentioned, it is vibration and force feedback technology, and it actually uses immersion force feedback technology like you'd find on a Thrustmaster wheel or a Logitech wheel. And it comes in at about $250, and that does include a two-year warranty. That's right, and it's the first force feedback wheel by Mad Cats. Uh, they've had a couple others for the 360 that weren't force feedback. And it also comes with a set of pedals that uh, are actually mounted inverted. <laughs> You know, normally a, uh, the sets come where they're mounted at the base, and these come so they're like inverted. Kinda. Kinda. <laughs> uh, as you can see, it only has a throttle and a brake, no clutch. And the size of the base here is about the size of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. That's about the diameter there. And the pedals sit about six inches high. Okay. So. What else we got, Sean? Well, looking towards the wheel or the shifter, we also have a sequential shifter on the wheel, and it's kind of cool. It's actually removable. You can go to the other side. It also comes with, well, actually, Darren's got the lap mount. Lap, lap wings. Lap we wings. call them lap wings, <laughs> which we do not recommend. That's for the ultra casual user. Yeah. It also comes with a mount, which, funny enough, the mount comes off the wheel. It's a very odd mount, and I couldn't believe it actually worked, but it kind of works in most situations. And in the case of our R seat, it actually kind of worked, but then we threw a couple of zip ties on it as well. Yeah, and, and since it's got this center mount. We're it, missing the little cup there, but. Yeah, any rig that's gonna have a center post or even a, a tight mounting spot, it, it, you're gonna have a tough time mounting it too. And the hard mount points, are pretty minimal. Yeah, actually. If they aren't even considered hard mount points, really. <laughs> yeah, it had four little spots, which I noticed kind of correspond with four little screws on the lap wings. That's right. But yeah. I think you might be able to get a way to kind of mount those, but they're not very strong or big. So the wheel is wireless to the Xbox 360, and they say it's you can go up to 32 feet, which we don't recommend. If you're going to have like a standard or a good racing position, you need to be no more than five feet away from that screen. Well, actually, it's only wired to an extent. I mean, you still got to plug it into the wall, but it is wireless to the unit, the Xbox. Right, and wired pedals. The pedals right. are wired up to the back of the wheel. Right, right. So that kind of takes us back to the wheel again, where it actually has a 10 and a half inch wheel. It's got a rubberized grip and... Plastic rim. Yeah, plastic rim, which, you know, we kind of talked about the seam on certain ones. You got another seam in this case as well. Um, 270 degrees of rotation. You've got all the typical 360 type buttons, the Y, X, A, B button, little directional pad, and of course an Xbox button. You also got the paddle shifters, which are made of metal, which comparing it to plastic, I mean, you know instantly it's got that cold touch. Same thing on the sequential shifter. A little bit of metal there makes you feel a little more real. Yep, and base is made of plastic, and you can plug in the power supply pedals and there's actually a little port where you can do firmware updates supposedly through the PC mm -hmm. uh, that's covered up with a little plastic piece that you you can unscrew. And you also have your sync button right here as well. That's right. Also you can plug in the Xbox chat dealy <laughs> right there so you can do the voice uh, voice chat on on the Xbox. Speaking of Xbox compatible with every racing game we tried Forza Motorsport 4, Dirt 3, tried a little F1 with it. Everything worked fine. Everything yeah. worked great. Plug Strongest plug. force feedback seemed to be with Dirt 3, which isn't a surprise. Yeah, and it gets a pretty good chatter out of the wheel, actually. <laughs> so that pretty much wraps up everything about the wheel as far as what you get in the box. And now why don't we talk about some pros? Okay. So first up with the pros, one of the only Xbox 360 force feedback wheels on the market, just this and the Fanatic CSR and GT2 right. are the only force feedback wheels on the market. New, I mean, you can still get the old Xbox Microsoft wireless force feedback wheel, but if you can find it used. Very similar, as a matter of fact. Uh, the other pro, decent force feedback. You yeah. know, it's using that immersion technology, so the force feedback does the job. I mean, it's intuitive, solid. Sure, sure. We were doing a little autocross where you're feeling the car unload a lot and you could really feel what the car was doing through the wheel. Absolutely. 
Another thing for me is that it truly is plug and play. Uh, I mean, it only works on the Xbox, but when you turn it on to the Xbox and bind it, it works every time. It'll turn the Xbox on as well. And that kind of leads the other pro for me, which is it is wireless. So despite needing to plug in the pedals and plug it into the wall, I don't have to run a cord up to the Xbox. So yep. That's good. Uh, next thing, buttons are nice. Uh, Placement's pretty good. Uh, it's not too far from where you're where you got to reach. Plus, it's got the two on the back, so those two extra buttons uh, that allow good location, uh, good functionality too. Nice click on all those buttons. Uh, the D-pad's nice too. Uh, really functional and and uh, as far as you know how it feels and and what it does, you know, moving through the menus, it works great. And a nice metal wheel. Uh, yeah. You know, pretty stout wheel. Uh, really no flex in it. You know, even though it's got this plastic up top and the seam, it's it's a pretty solid wheel. Yeah, definitely. And like you mentioned, those those buttons on the back, they work for the telemetry and the car damage screen, and you can scroll through them, so that's kind of cool, and they're really easy to access. One more, sequential shifter. Yeah, and reversible. Yeah, that, that's a that's a that's that's definitely a pro. And the metal touch on the both of the shifters, which gives it just a little more realism, makes a little more stout feeling. Yep, it does. But that is the end of the pros list, which means that title that you threw out was almost as long as our whole pros list. I think you're right. <laughs> so Pretty close. <laughs> pretty close. Anyway, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to go over the cons list and put it on the Shibami, give you all those scores, and uh, that should do it. Tania's extensive lineup of radio-controlled vehicles provides hobbyists with the joy of running exact replicas of their favorite car, tank, or off-road vehicle. Another attraction of these vehicles is their use of high-grade materials such as nylon resin, carbon fiber, and polycarbonate. With precise mechanical systems, the maintenance and adjustment of the various components as well as performance upgrading with optional parts allows for truly competitive racing. For more information about Tamiya, visit us at www.tamiyausa.com. So these are the pedals. We're gonna start with the cons, and I don't know what the heck they were thinking here. I, you know, it, it, the progression on these pedals are mush. Yeah. I guess is the best way to to, <laughs> to describe them, wouldn't I, you, Sean? I even think mush is nice. I mean, some people like mush. And I hate to beat them up. I mean, these pedals were like an afterthought, it seems. You know what it almost? Uh, Madcast owns a few other companies. It's almost Who? like Madcast. Mad, Mad cats, cats owns a few companies, and I'm wondering if those weren't like the SciTech rudder pedals or something. It's like, how can those be a gas and throttle? I, I don't get it. Yeah, it, it's definitely an odd design. Now I'm gonna try to put these back together for the rest of the show. And that whole Here heel we go. plate- I did it. <laughs> and that whole heel plate is a whole other curiosity for me. Yeah, um, they're the wrong angle. Even though this, they're the inverted, I mean, what the heck is that? <laughs> That's not inverted. I mean, what am I supposed to be sitting like I'm driving a bus? <laughs> Stomping down. Straight down. I mean, <laughs> come on. They're supposed to be like this. Cheap, toy-like, plastic. I, I, you know what this plastic reminds me of? Huh. And, this, and the sound it makes huh. when it's clicking together? That, that Hot Wheels plastic <laughs> when we were kids. Yeah, like the tracks and things. Exactly, like that click together plastic. Man, I'm sorry, Mad Cats, for beating you up on these. You know what we're trying to do? We're trying to get you to make a better set of pedals. Yeah. Um, it would change everything. And uh, the rubber face on them. Another thing for me on these, yeah, the rubber face, like the, it was too grippy when I was looking for grip and not slippery when I wanted it to be slippery. And another thing, you talked about the progression of the pedals, but that's not the only part that bothers me. The other thing is when I'm getting off of the gas or the brake, they are like Stick. so slow to react. That's the mushy that yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah. They just, they don't come back with your foot, <laughs> they kind of just stay there and come back when they feel like it. Yeah. So now that leads us to the wheel. Cons on the wheel. Okay. Starting with no click. No. At first I thought I'm, they were I'm actually shifting. variable, but yeah, they're not. I'm shifting and, here I'm gonna put it near my microphone so you guys can hear it, there's nothing. 
Well, and the same goes for the sequential. So when you're using the sequential, which is reversible, it just kind of, kind of just flops. It doesn't really do anything to verify that you've done something to ask for a gear. Yeah, which, uh, you know what, is that realistic though? I mean, does a paddle shifter in a real car actually have a button click? Uh, that I don't know. I've never driven a paddle shift car, but, but at least you get something like a click through the car saying new gear. Uh, exactly. Um, what else we got here, Sean? One thing for me, sometimes my hands get a little warm when I'm driving and I've used a lot of rubber grip wheels and I haven't had this problem recently until this wheel, but it actually starts kind of bunching up and you get little beads of rubber when you get sweaty. So I think that'll go away. It might even start wearing down a little bit, kind of nitpicky, but it is a little common. That is a little nitpicky. Uh, noisy gear, as you can hear, noisy gear when it's turning. Uh, only 270 degrees of rotation, so you're limited there, you know, where, you know, current technology, 900 degrees is the, is the minimum now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there's wheels up to 1080 and 270 is not cutting it anymore. I mean, come on, 320, 540, <laughs> give us at least a little bit more. I just mean, something. come on, you just start turning and you're bang, you're on the, uh, yeah. you're on the lock. For F1, it's great, you know, stuff like that. But, and actually Forza was kind of made for it, mm -hmm. 270, so it works, works great on Forza, but 270 is just kind of a bummer. Yeah, it just makes it too twitchy. Another thing for me is the clamp, which is removable, and that's odd, but it's really to be done so that you can accommodate the lap wings. And that's something I don't ever want to accommodate. I would much prefer a, a solid mount and something that actually mounts it. Maybe some hard mount options that are actually realistic using some proper hardware. That would make it a better wheel for me as well. Next con is the price. 250 too much. That, that's too expensive for this wheel and pedal set. 150 you know, DFGT range, you know, I'd say that's pretty good. And considering it's only Xbox 360 compatible, you know, you can't use it on the PC, you can't use it on the PS3. So 250 bucks for this thing on the Xbox 360 yeah. to play a handful of games, I don't yeah. know, man, that's that's a little pricey. Yeah. And especially the build quality for that much, it's it's just not up to $250 build quality. I completely agree. Fanatic, right now, CSR wheel and pedal set, 299 Yeah, and that's uh, the quality is definitely a step up in that department for just a few bucks more. Um, but this is an option some people are going to get. It might be even easier to get for some people. So as you can see, the cons list is kind of a little bigger. I'm, now I'm a little out of breath, but we got to stop it there. That's going to wrap up the punching bag. <laughs> yeah, we got to call it quits somewhere. But we want to go ahead and give you the overall Shabami score. But before we do, Darren, why don't you give us all of the scores through the categories? All righty. Starting with force feedback, out of 15, we gave it 10. Wheel rim, out of 15, we gave it 11. Pedals out of 15, we gave it five and a half. Buttons out of 10, we gave it eight and a half. Mounting out of 10, we gave it a seven. Compatibility out of 10, we gave it a three and a half. Paddle shifters out of 10, we gave it a seven. Cost out of five, two and two quarters. Construction out of five, we gave it a two. Plug and play, we gave it a five for a final score of, Sean? Well, 61 and three quarters, well, 62. We'll give well, it a 62. Give, yeah, let's be generous, <laughs> give him an extra quarter point there. They can use the quarter point. I mean, ultimately, the wheel rim did pretty well and the plug and play did really well. Other than that, it kind of... Pedals really hurt the score. Yeah, yeah. Pedals, man, if those pedals were decent, that could have brought the score up into the 70s. Yeah. You know, pedals, we gave it a five and a half out of 15. Yeah, brutal. So if we could have given it another seven, eight points on the pedals, yeah. you know, that would have got it really close to 70. Definitely. You know, and that would have given it a C. I mean, you know, the wheel is a C, I would say, wouldn't you? Would yeah, I you think agree? that's fair, yeah. So, I think that's gonna wrap up. That is gonna wrap it up. Any final thoughts for you on this one? Yeah, you know what? We mentioned the price for this, at this price range, 250 is just too much for this package. At, yeah. at 150, you know, I, I could kind of recommend it, but mm -hmm. 250, I just, man, spend another 50 bucks, get the Fanatic, the CSR and the CSR pedals. I, I completely agree. For me, when it comes to looking at this wheel, I think to myself, if I'm gonna get into the wheel market, I'm gonna pick some of the good wheels and I'm gonna copy them for a starting point. And it seems like they grabbed the old Microsoft 360 wheel, which I don't think anybody really loved that wheel, and they kind of started there. And that's not a good starting point for a wheel. So Sure seems like it. Yeah, and that's what they ended up with. So I, I, I wish it was a little bit better. And I mean, it has hope. I can see it being better with some revisions, but for now, not my favorite wheel. New pedals. <laughs> you know, compatibility, last thing too. You know, it's only on the Xbox 360. If this thing worked on the PC, yeah. you know, so people could, you know, make the transition, use yeah. the wheel with a different set of pedals. Then you got something. 
You know, and I, I am a little concerned about the longevity of this thing. I don't know. We have we didn't get it that long. We've only tested it about a month, but um, doesn't seem like it's too robust. I've heard some things. Yeah. <laughs> so that's gonna wrap up our review of the wireless force feedback racing wheel with vibration technology. I think I got it all. Yeah, let me get you some air. <laughs> By Mad Cats for the Xbox 360. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, check out our forums at insidesimracing.tv forward slash forums. If you want to discuss this wheel and others, check out the other stuff we've discussed and reviewed here on the show. For Sean Cole, I'm Darren Ganji. We'll see you next time. Rolling? Yeah, we'll go to the Shabami. Shabami, Shabami. I was gonna wing it. <laughs> is this guy is this on film? Oh yeah, this is roll roll rolling. <laughs> this is this is Oh yeah, this is roll roll rolling. <laughs> this is this is the bloopers right here. Oh yeah, this is roll roll rolling. <laughs> this is this is this is this is this is roll roll rolling, roll roll rolling, roll roll rolling. This is this is the bloopers right here. Driving a bus? <laughs> what the heck is that? What the heck is that? Um yeah, like put them on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> I did it!